Welcome back everyone. Today we are revisiting a project that gained lots of interest last month. This video will provide you with an update on Larry Hofer's groundbreaking endeavor. Larry is the first in the world to convert a C8 Corvette with a massive 8.1 liter direct injection big block engine. This isn't just an engine swap. Larry is having to re-engineer the entire platform tackling complex challenges to integrate the powerhouse into a modern C8 Corvette architecture. Stick around and see how he's pushing the boundaries of automotive innovation and getting closer to making this insane powerhouse shut up and run. Where we're at now is we've got the intake on, all the direct injection is in and wired. We pressure tested it to 2,500 pounds. We've made this really cool little pump that is used for uh, checking direct injectors for diesels and ran a pigtail from there into the fuel rails in here and then pressurized the whole system to make sure that it wasn't leaking because we had no idea. So we got that done. So we assembled the intake manifold on it, got our fuel system done. This is all done, it's just not plugged in. Goes down here. So the top of the motor's done. Got the valve train finished up yesterday. And then what we did, we took the the uh, main drive belt off here and the direct injection pump off here. And then we ran the pump off of this screw here and we pressurized the whole cooling system. So we've got where the tank would be attached here. So you made another line here that takes the discharge out from the pump that would go into the dry sump here and just ran it around into the supply for this pump here. So this is just bypassed right now. Yeah, right? see it's that, that mechanism right here. Okay. The reason is we can take this out of the way. We put six quarts of oil in the motor. Then we start running the pump without the belt on it and it simply charges the whole motor up. We had oil coming out the rocker arms. And then we turn the engine over with a bar through here. And we were sure that there was oil everywhere. This motor has been sitting for like two years. So I was concerned about having to fire this thing up dry. Mm -hmm. So we charged the whole oiling system. Now we'll put it back into the car. That's what we're going to do in the next couple of days is put it back in. There's another oil line we made here. Probably can't see it. It's a big yeah, one down there. Yeah, you can there. see it back there. This guy. And all it's doing, that guy goes to the oil cooler. It's got two hoses that come up here and it goes up to that tank. This guy here. Okay, so that's your oil cooler. And then these are the hoses that attach to it. So we had all that made, made this, put this in, and these two lines here plug back into the side of the motor. And One did you thing. have to shorten these or make these custom? Oh, we made, yeah, we made these. Okay, so those are all made. <laughs> yeah, we made this, we made this, we made this. That's original. So um, this is not an original oil cooler? No. Okay. The original cooler looks like this. Okay. And these are used for water. So this is the cooler for the automatic or the transmission. Sure. So it's got these hoses here that come out of here. These cool the transmission. Which are cooled with coolant, radiator yes, coolant. It's got a plate. Like a hockey puck, right. whatever style cooler. cooler. Yeah. And this water goes to that cooler, which in turn cools the oil inside the transmission. So this cools the transmission. This one here, the only car that used this was a Z06 and it used one of those water to water intercoolers. That's why we had to make this oil intercooler. Okay. It's an air to oil, but it fits in the same location, mounts on the same brackets and just, you know, it uses all the stock stuff. So this will cool our engine oil. What, what's this guy? <laughs> or should I not have asked that? I haven't got a fucking clue. Oh, okay. <laughs> there are pieces on this car. I would be surprised if this is I not ask that. <laughs> the cooling controller for the radiator for fans or right. the fans but i don't know there's so many things on this car i don't know okay but we know that this was the transmission control right. module this is the transmission module and there's not one of those whatever that is over here yeah but here again it never had you know i don't know i've never looked it up i've never we'll see if somebody knows in the comment i haven't got a clue so if somebody that? knows maybe they could drop it in the comment what this is Maybe but Zach knows. I it might know. be, like you said, it might be a cooling fan module. Um, oh, I know it's made in Mexico. It says it, so, all right. Yeah, I don't know. I've never even thought about it. Now, all these connectors here, there's connectors here, there's connectors there. All these guys over here 
Okay, these I'll attach to, get this, you'll like this. Everything on the engine is wired to everything else on the car. So to be able okay. to put the engine in the car, here's all those connectors for the transmission one. Yeah, that's the transmission one. Right? That looks like so, the one, yeah. There's also cooling sensors. There's also chassis grounds. This is a starter cable ground. How okay. about that? So this goes to the frame, and that's on this side. And then you go to this side, and this here, this is all engine management. Okay. This whole thing, this is where we're going to put our HP turners. And this is where your injectors, this goes up to your injectors and ignition coils. Well, this goes to the on. front. Okay. Now, look at this one. And here again, there's that module that goes yeah. up front. That so those are pretty large is. pins in there, so it might carry some current, which makes me believe it could be something like a fan. Wouldn't be surprised. I've not really spent any time trying to figure out what anything does. If okay. I don't have to touch it, I'm not touching it. Okay. So these guys all come this way and then come out to the body this way. These go forward this way. And then that one there goes out that side. And then we put this on so we can check the oil pressure while we're cranking the motor over. And here's that transmission cooler you're talking about. Right. This is the plate type transmission cooler. Yeah. Very similar to what you'd see like on an Audi or BMW or right. Mercedes. Now a Z06 has a cooler like that down here. And that's when they put the secondary water radiator in the left-hand side. They run the water down to this cooler, the plate cooler for the Z06. But see, this motor doesn't have that option, so we're putting an oil to air cooler. Now, what about these exhaust, um, the headers or manifolds? Are these custom okay. made, or what are these off of? These are stock up to this point. So everything on the outside, CA Corvette. From here, we cut them off. All these are cut off. And this is a big block 8.1. Flange. flange okay and then we adapted these pipes to the two inch flanges on here and it worked out really good so this keeps these in the right place that means the catalytic converters all so it's going to get the cats oh, wow. cats yeah. will still be there so you're going to have your upstream and downstream o2 it has all the stock shielding that goes on here because without this you'd burn the car up it's pretty industrial so and then we put our ignition coils down underneath See, we have all the coils down here. Okay. And all the factory wiring down here for the coils. This one here, this one here goes here. And a lot of this isn't finished until we actually plug it in, because that's our next thing. Once we put it in the car, we're going to start running computer checks on everything, and then we'll find out what's working and what's not working, because my concern is we put something together and we got the firing order wrong. That would be a big one. I don't think that's a problem, but it could be. But we've got all these sensors that plug in, like here's an oil temperature and there's a yeah. little pressure. Well, you'll be able in. to see those sensors on the live data of the scan tool. Well, that's what that's what we need to do, yeah. But we need to make sure that we've got one that'll read this new computer. The C8 is pretty tough with that E99 uh, computer. They have one you can get on your on your phone, Larry. And well, download it. That'll be for you to show me. No, I'm just joking. Yeah, you could probably do it on your phone, but we have a couple scanners we can use. I see you got your map sensor there. These are all the connectors for the direct injectors. Now, what are the vacuum lines? Because we're reading vacuum off of here. Is, okay. this just a, is this another? It's going from the plenum, or from the valley, back up to the... Right. So this is basically our vacuum for the PVC. Okay. Inside here, inside the block. Okay, so it's internal. There's an oil separator. Okay. So we've got whatever vapor is floating around through here is separated inside the engine, and it's drawn out through here. Then, over on this side, we have another set. Uh, where'd it go? It's so, over. I'm a, okay, so these injectors here are just dummy injectors then. Correct. So the injectors that you have up on top are not going to be utilized. They're just simply plugging the hole. Right, and the reason is this manifold here is the manifold base we use for an 8.1. Okay. And the 8.1 is port injected. Okay. So because we're using that, we have to have something to plug the I think the that holes. Vengeance Racing intake manifold has the same setup. Something similar it has like to this dummy too. injectors in it. That is correct. Okay. And we just haven't gone that far. So, because you kind of threw me a little bit because I knew that you were doing the, the direct injectors are down here. Correct. In the valley, which you really can't see. You can see the high pressure pump. Right. Which is actuated off the camshaft, which has mm -hmm. the three loads we talked too. about. When we crank the engine over, oh, we ran the engine with the starter too. Okay. Because I was curious to be able to run this thing over while we were making oil pressure to see what kind of oil pressure we were, we were making out of the engine. Uh-huh. That was well, not that the expensive. engine was cranking over. And the oil pressure came up, and my concern was that we were running out of displacement travel 
on this pump. Mm -hmm. But we put our fingers on it, and it was really nice and smooth. So there was nothing going bang, bang, bang inside. Okay. All these numbers are magic, too. We have no... So were you able to make fuel pressure with the actual high-pressure pump? Did not try. Oh, you did not try, but you pressurized the fuel rail with your handheld... Right. Your hand... Your device Everything, you made. Every okay. piece of the fuel system inside here was pressurized to 2,500 PSI. And no leaks. And it didn't leak. That's and great. I was way happy with that. Is so, 2,500 PSI the operating pressure 3, for this? 3,000 is a ton. Okay. But on our pump assembly, at 2,500 PSI, I couldn't push the arm anymore. Yeah. It, it was simply a lot of pressure on the pump. Okay. So I was happy with 25. Now, another thing, this is our fuel line that we made. It's similar to... Does it return or... A... No, this is main feed right here. This is the main how feed. Is, how is the main feed? That's a piece of magic that we Okay, but know. this is low pressure. This is 65 60 PSI. 60 PSI. Yeah. And this is what we use in our boat stuff. So it's stuff okay. I normally use. Inside here, this is clamp that's not holding anything. There mm. is a magic check valve inside this line right here. And that okay. clamp is holding the check valve in the right place. And when you put this in here, we don't even know why they got a check valve in here. It's got a 3 16 hole inside it for all the fuel to go through. Okay. So you got a 3 8 line and you're trying to make five or 600 horsepower through a 3 8 line. And then you put that check valve in there with a the little 3 16 hole. So we're even debating whether it even ought to be in there or not. But Chevrolet put it in there for some reason. And I don't know, it might have something to do with the direct injection, high pressure coming backwards. I don't know. We don't know, we really don't know. That guy right there. If anybody knows, I'm way well, happy. Well, I don't know if it's similar to a diesel, because a diesel would, you know, the it's pretty small volume once it gets to the injectors at the pump. Because mm -hmm. oh, it's I high pressure, so you don't need the volume, you have the, But to I don't make, know. To make 600 horsepower at 60 PSI, mm -hmm. you need a three inch fuel line, or even a half inch fuel line. And you said that's a three millimeter hole? No, it's a three sixteenths Three sixteenths, well. It's a little out. bit bigger than an eighth of an inch. <laughs> Throw it out. So all the fuel that we're running through this line here because yeah. we want the horsepower has to go through that check valve and it's got a three sixteenths hole. Hmm. So, but anyway, we, we discovered that it's originally down inside here on this line. I wonder if that's just to purge air out of the system or so. No, because the air is already gone out of the system. Yeah, I don't know. This is simply fuel pressure going that way. And that thing there, well, it's not driving us nuts because it was in the motor to start with. We yeah. just put it back in. But in the world of everything I know, that shouldn't be there. Yeah. But it is, so we leave it there. It'll start up and run. It may just go lean at top end, right? If it runs out of fuel, that check valve's well, coming out. Trash. Yeah. Right there. That guy's going in the trash. Fortunately, we can take this apart. That's cool. Paul and I looked at that for an hour, going, what in the fuck are they doing there? <laughs> Because you don't know. Nobody even knows that's there. Yeah. Interesting. So how, like, is, is this, when you said close to going back in, what, what are we talking? This, is it going in this week? In putting okay. spark plugs in it. Plug wires in it. Shielding's going on it. This is done. This is done. This is done. All the dry sump is done. I need two hose clamps for the water hoses up front. I haven't got that done yet. And then we're going to put the dry sump here and then run the dry sump on this pump before we put the motor in the car because we don't know where the oil level is going to be in the tank. Okay. So if, if the dry sump tank is sitting here, I can look inside the tank and run it and see what happens because this pump, the suction pump that vacuums out the inside of the gas tank draws a lot more oil than goes back into it. So it's constantly trying to fill this tank back up. Yeah. So we've got to find out what the level is going to be in the tank. We're shooting for something around there. But I don't want to try and do that in the car because I can't see inside the car. Sure. I can't see inside this tank. Because once you get it here, you know, there's there's the body right there. Yeah. So trying to see down in here, pretty tough. So we'll run this probably in the next day or two, depending on time. Um, finish up the ignition, put the shielding on here. See, these are on. So we're checking for space. Yeah. I need to make sure this fits back here and get this. And then put these together, put the cats on it, and put it in the car. I think we should put it in the car, hook everything up, and see how it communicates. Right. Once we get it, see, once we get everything so we can hook it up in the car, then we'll plug all these things in. And I mean, I really don't want to plug all this in until we're done because 
this is really a nuisance when you have to plug all these things in. All the connections break, all the connectors break, all these little guys here, once you use them, they're done. Yeah. So you want to avoid it coming in. That's the last in. thing you really want to do yeah. with this, and I hope that everything is right because I don't want to take it back out for the and 19th break all these time. connections. Yeah. Again. You got to put this hose clamp on too. Oh, we have to put all <laughs> the air intake here. Yeah. Um, this was uh, on the intake. So system. on the stock C8, Mm -hmm. Is it using a drive-by wire throttle body? Yeah, this it is, is this obviously. This is stock C8. That's stock C8. And this is stock C8, and then the air intake that's okay. going to go here. So this is a part off of this 6.2 liter. Right, that's so, actually the one off of this actual car that okay. came from. So the ECU is still going to, an accelerator position sensor is going to talk to It's still going to recognize It's still going to talk the same right. language. We've got these guys here. These are O2 sensors. This goes up here. This guy here goes there. This guy here goes... Where's this, this is great. Go? Oh, this goes to the VAP somewhere. That goes to this guy here I'm carrying yeah. around my hand. Well, that's not going to prevent it from running. No. And that goes there. So this guy goes here. Oh, here's where that other hose went. You were asking about the vacuum hose. Oh, okay. So, so it's just gonna, that's just off here. the charcoal canister back into the intake. Yeah, and this is EVAP for the charcoal canister. Okay. And this guy goes something like this. So we're going to make sure we uh, follow you on this. I'm going to... I'm sure everybody's going to want to see this thing when it comes live, so... Me too. <laughs> yeah, you too. How many years in the working? Oh, at least two. Two years in the work. At least yeah. two. Yeah, but everything's looking good. I mean, we can take this out and you can get to all the direct the connectors under here for the direct injection. See, here's all the, the direct injection. And I injection. do remember, because some of the people in the comments thought it was a bunch of BS, but I do remember you bought this car like on a Thursday, and on Saturday you ended up on the lift pulling the engine out. Right? Wasn't it? Probably not that quick, but within yeah. a couple of weeks. Within a couple of weeks of owning it? We had to have the engine out to see if it had fit, to even see if the concept was feasible. And then I remember you pulling the engine the first yeah. time. That was a big adventure. Everybody had to come down and tear a new car apart. Yeah. Um, didn't get dirty, though. No, it didn't get dirty. It was really <laughs> nice working on that. And then, so we had it out for probably two, three weeks, measured this, measured that, looked at it, and then put it all back together. Yeah. And then it spent next year, next year in the garage park. And then we started measuring up the block and machining it. And then we found out we had to make heads. Well, that screwed up another six months or eight months. So by the time we got done building all the pieces we had to make, yeah, it's been like two years. Yeah. Well, folks, that's it for now. We're going to keep uh, showing you the progress of this monumental moment as Larry Hofer gets closer to installing this big block back into a C8 Corvette. We hope you enjoyed this segment, and if you haven't already, please subscribe.